Hi there, welcome back to this case study, the data science case study where we will, we are already talking about the data set, the Airbnb data set and these were like the last 20 question which is starting from the 21 to 40 that I had uh, shared with you and uh, before that I had shared the first 20 questions. So right now uh, you must have uh, done the work on these 40 questions. And now we will move on to a little bit more on the data science model building work where we will build some models related to the data science as well as some advanced techniques like uh, cross validation. Um, we will look at the questions related to the cross validation. I'll try to explain and so that you can do the work as well as we will see uh, the how we can find the right parameters. Uh, what is the method of finding the right parameters for some sophisticated algorithms which allows parameter tuning like disease and trees, random forests and algorithms like those. All right, so let's go ahead and see the first question. So earlier question was like, uh, uh, you know, splitting the data in train and test and fitting a model and all. Now, uh, what I'm asking you is uh, do the prediction on hold out data set. So hold out data set is nothing but the test data set the x underscore test data set which you would have created and having the 30 percent of the observation and it will give you the predicted value on the holdout data set that means it is a data set which our model has not seen and since it, this is an unseen values uh, you will get an idea that how well the model is doing on the unseen data then you import the mean absolute error, mean squared error and R2 score metric from the sklearn matrix library. You need to know how to import all of those. It's in one single line you will be able to import and uh, get the, you know, these three libraries for the purpose of evaluating the model matrix. Then you need to know, you need to identify what is a mean absolute value and root mean squared value. Now root mean squared value, if you see, it's not here it's a mean squared error but what i'm asking you is root if i can underline that like root mean squared value so how you will identify the root what is the way to identify a root within python we need to know that and see what is the difference between the mean absolute value and root mean squared value what what you can really tell about that it can be an interview question as well that uh, what is the difference between mean absolute value and root mean squared value and what you can interpret out of it so you need to know that uh, then what are the coefficient value and how you would interpret it right so we have taken like around four coefficient if i'm not wrong for based on the previous uh, exercises question so what is the coefficient value that basically uh, will be given by the the one of the uh, parameter of the model that this is the, these are the coefficient these are the value but then how you would interpret that is also makes sense then what is the r score value uh, and how you would interpret it so the so far what i have uh, asked you is only the r score value the r square value to be precise and the r square value at a high level if i tell you it shows the contribution of variables within the model like uh, all the variables whether they are contributing 67 percent or 80 percent or 90 percent or 30 percent it can be anything right so what is the r square value and how you would interpret it and another pretty interesting question will be which i want you to explore is the adjusted r square what is adjusted r square and how it is different from r square and what is a better metric whether r square is a better metric or adjusted r square is a better metric so i'm just giving you trying to give you a perspective so that you can do a research or you can ask me in the comments if, if you are not not at all able to find it um, then import the decision tree regressor library from the sklearn. Uh, this is something uh, earlier we tried linear regression. Now we are trying with the sophisticated decision tree regressor. So decision tree uh, can be used for both classification as well as for regression. And here specifically we are dealing with the regression problem. So we go we will going to import the decision tree regressor library. Initialize and fit the decision tree on the training data. So right now no parameters nothing um, Have been filled up as a custom parameters We are just initializing what the default uh, parameters are and if you want to see the default parameter just 
print what you have the object that you have initialized with uh, the model and then uh, it will show you all the default parameters and then you will going to go ahead and fit which is a straightforward then you will predict the values on the test data uh, and store the result in the vipred variable to, uh, for the purpose of uh, metrics now in the next question as you would expect you need to identify rmsc which is root mean squared value that you have already done with the linear regression uh, and you need to compare this value with the linear regression and see whether uh, the value is uh, higher or lower and if the value is lower that means the model is better than the linear regression then tune the decision tree parameters like uh, criterion max step and max feature and create a new model so you need to give some specific values criterion like by default i think uh, uh, there is a default criterion but there are other criterions like uh, mae the mean absolute error and and you can actually see the help around that uh, when you press shift and two times tab within python uh, and uh, in r you can take a help on the criteria that what are the criteria and what is the max tab what are the max features that you want to uh, have uh, and i think there is a leaf node parameter as well that you that you can specify and see uh, from like 5 to 10 max tab whether making sense different criterion making sense and giving you the output is the RMSC of the new model whatever parameter that you have tried whether the RMSC of a new model is better than the old decision tree and linear regression model you need to check with the help of RMSC then we are moving to little bit advanced stuff which is cross validation now what is cross validation if you if you don't already know basically if you remember in the previous uh, from 21 to 40 question I asked you to create a train and test data set and train and test data set basically uh, create one holdout data set based on how many observation you want in the test what we have chosen at that time is the 30 percent of the data set so what it does is over here in the cross validation that it holds out the data set let's say we have a data set and uh, we want a cross validation of a value 10 so what it means is out of 10 one value uh, one of the data set will be a uh, holdout for testing and uh, rest 90 percent of the observation on the um on the uh training then what will happen from one from first 10 percent and from 30 to 100 percent data set will be hold it out but from 11 to 20 percent will be hold it out for test testing and so on and so forth so what is the meaning of this is that uh, we are not just holding out one data set but we are training the model on the entire data set by this uh, cross validation so it divides the data in 10 data set in each iteration it holds the uh, one the the frag uh, the uh, first 10 percent then the second 10 percent then the third 10 percent uh, as the holdout data set so that you will have a better idea about the uh, the the scores which is coming out of the uh, cross validation and you can see that uh, there will be a fluctuations in some cases it will be high in some cases it will be low so that's why we were going to print the mean of score so we will take an average of score and see what is the best score or average score that we have from the model now you can run the cross validation on decision tree earlier you ran the cross validation on the linear regression now you need to run the cross validation on the decision tree and see the mean uh, and compare it with the linear regression and see which one is less because uh, as i said less is better in that case uh, once you are done with this uh, you need to create a parameter for the decision tree uh, max depth and ma min sample leaf so what is going on here is uh, we are looking to tune the parameters by identifying what is the right parameter and in that case we create a list of let's say max step 1 to 10 sample leaf like 1 to 20 things like that like into a list and uh, then we need to convert into a dictionary for a grid search function so we will going to earlier that was a cross validation now we are doing a grid search grid search helps in identifying the parameters what are the right parameters we have for the uh, model which we can uh, you know get it and then you need to store the output of grid search cv function into a grid object so you need to specify your parameters your model uh, into the grid search cv function 
and then uh, get the output in a grid object this will uh, then we need to fit the grid object and uh, print the best score best parameter and best at estimator it has these attributes like best score best parameter and best estimator uh, which basically tells us what at what point uh, grid search is identifying from the function the grid search cv function when the score was good when base and when the parameters were good and the estimator uh, for the decision tree model now this can be applied to any other sophisticated algorithm which is grid search cv the only drawback is that uh, it takes a lot of time so for example where i had uh, a very um, small data set around somewhere around uh, i don't know 800 hour rows or 100 yeah, I, I really don't remember the rows but i guess uh, even for 1000 rows it will going to take anywhere between uh, two to three minutes because it does a very heavy processing on the data and uh, identify the best parameters uh, for you so be cautious when you are applying this on the very large data set because it may takes hours and that's why it is uh, recommended that let's say if you have 100,000 rows then just take a sample maybe uh, 1000 rows or 5000 rows whatever the best sampling methodology that goes for you and uh, you know do the do the grid search cv on that or or the other processing which is a very heavy or intensive processing so grid search cv is a very intensive processing that because it, it goes through uh, each and every data point and try to identify the score parameter and estimator that is best and then after you will get these scores uh, which is uh, parameters and all then you will fit the regression model or i'm sorry the uh, render the decision tree model and uh, with that will give you the best output which uh, you otherwise don't know and need to experiment a lot so grid search cv helps you in identifying what is best for your model that you can really use and uh, apply in the real life so that's about it for the 60 question again as you know solution is present in the uh, description section if you need it but i highly recommend that uh, you look at the, the the solving the question on your own because this will help you do a lot of research a lot of uh, you know looking into the blogs my my blog i have shown this in the python uh, training which is like uh, a pretty long video like eight hours or 16 hours video that i've posted and uh, but in case if you still feel that uh, you are not able to figure it out something you know ask me in the comments and I'll, I'll try to answer it so that's about it and i'll meet you in the new video with a new topic